Now that you have your raculator, we're going to show you how to operate it. Any button will turn this on. Just press any button on the raculator. It'll turn on. And then you always press new. That'll clear out anything that might be in there and set it up for the spread, inside spread. We use the electronic tape. Pull it out. Use the outside edge of this clip and the outside of this, the neck of the housing here. Just put them in there. Find your widest spread. There's a lock button here, this lock button, you just engage that forward and you can manually push your tape in. It automatically records the length of the tape. You get that done. Step one is over with, it's saying it's set up in five steps. You press the step button and it's automatically, automatically going to add an inch and three eighths for this distance from the neck to the clip that was in there. It's going to be an inch and three eighths more than it displays on your screen. That is added in right now when you hit the step button. And it moves you on to right circumference one. The raculator will always tell you what step to do next. So to do right circumference one, we're just going to go like this. Use the electronic tape again for all circumferences and spreads all the time. We have this little clip. You just hook it in there like that. We have the lines on here to just to help show you people where to do these. Slide the raculator up on there like that. Make sure that the tape goes pretty much straight into the housing. Get everything tight. With, you can push out the slack with your finger and your thumb. Push that out. Engage that lock button again. You can then pull the raculator back to unhook. Then just manually push the tape back in get that pushed all the way in and on the circumferences it's programmed to add two eighths for the length of the clip. You then hit the sub button whenever there's more than one measurement in a step you use the sub button to advance on to the next one. So when they'll press the sub button it advances to circumference two, right circumference two and it added the two eighths on for that clip. Disengage your button Go to circumference two. Just repeat the steps. Lock your button again. Unhook it. Manually push it in. Hit the sub button again. You go to right circumference three. Again, we have the lines on there just to help show for this demonstration. Hook that on there. Hit the sub button. We get to circumference four. After the fourth circumference, you can hit the sub or the step if you want to sub through and check your measurements. You can do that or you can just hit step. It'll advance you to right beam. Now the beams and the tines, we just roll with the wheel. We we'll use this little pointer right here for your start and stop points. And I like to hold the rack later on doing this way up front, just like a pin or something. And I use my other two fingers to help guide. You can just take that pointer and Point it right where you want to start. Just roll that beam. All the way down to the end of the burr. You get that done. You have step two completed. There's only one measurement in that step, so you hit the step button. Advance on to right, tine one, typical tine one. This is always right tine one. 
Just use your little pointer again. And we've drawn lines on. You go down the beam or down the time to the line you have pre-marked. The line is from the top of the you follow down the tine from the top and you go to the base of it from the top of the beam like that. That's where your line goes. Again, we'll hit the sub button. We'll take you to a typical tine 2 on the right side. We'll measure that one off. Again, just right down to your mark. Hit the sub button. Go to time three. Hit the sub button again. Now, if you ever slip off of a tine or anything, uh, rubber sticks pretty good, but something might happen that you slip off or anything, you can always just go hit the clear button. It'll just clear that measurement you were doing, and you can just go do it over. And we have all the typicals done on the right side. So that step is over with. We'll hit the step button. It'll take you to non-typicals on the right. If you have any non-typicals, now is when you'll do them. If you don't have any, you can just hit step and advance on to the left side. We have this little one here we'll do. Have all, those, all the non-typicals done on the right side. Hit step again. And we go to the left circumference one. Again, we'll use the electronic tape. Gauge that lock button. Pull it back. Let's feed that back in again. Hit your sub button. Advance to circumference two on the left side. Always remembering that it's programmed to add that two ace on for that clip. Press your sub button, you get to circumference three. Circumference four. Got that done, and that steps over with again. So we're going to hit the step button. We'll go to the left beam. Disengage your lock button again. And Roll that beam off, hit the step button, we'll go to left tine one, <coughs> using your little pointer again, roll down to your mark, hit the sub button, we'll get to the second typical tine. We'll hit sub again. It'll tell you to do the third typical tine on the left. Go to the fourth one. We have all the typical tines done on that side. The rack later will go to nine. In this case we only have four, so we're going to hit step. It advances it to the non-typicals. We have one on this side also. We 
We'll measure that one. Uh, you have, now I have everything measured on this particular rack. So you're ready to hit the score button. You can just hit score and your scores will come up in uh, whichever uh, scoring measurement you want to see, which scoring system. Like here, what do we have on here now? We have net non-typical, Boone and Crockett, hit score again. We have BTR, Buckmaster's Trophy Records, SCI typical, SCI non-typical. Uh, we have gross typical Boone and Crockett, net typical Boone and Crockett, gross non-typical Boone and Crockett, and net non-typical Boone and Crockett. You can sub through any one of those scores. It'll tell you the spread. You hit the sub button again, it'll tell you the total of the right antler. Hit the sub again, it'll tell you the total of the left. You can step through, check any measurement. There's the spread on that. There's right circumference one. Hit the sub button, you got circumference two, three, four. You can just keep looking at them. There's your beam, right beam, left tine one, or right tine one. I hit the step, I went to the non typicals. You can just keep checking. Make sure you did everything. You can go back in and change one if you want to. If you want to remeasure, say, uh, left tine two, you can just hit clear right now. It'll clear that out. You can go back and remeasure that time. You can do that on any measurement on this whole thing that you want to. Hit score button again. Everything is all automatically recalculated. The only way you clear that whole thing out is if you press new, it'll clear it out, set it up for a zero and start, start over so you can do another one. If you're ever going along a tine, and for some reason you might be in an awkward position or something, and your raculator, you know, you slip and go backwards, it doesn't matter if you go back and forth. You can do that as much as you want, as long as the wheel doesn't lose contact with the horn. And you can just go right on down to your point, and if you can go, you can go back and forth. And as long as you stop at that same point, your reading will always be the same on the raculator. Because it's a, just a plus minus switches when you switch the direction. So that's the way that works. I'm going to show you a, a tip that'll help you a bunch to keep from kinking the tape. Uh, we just uh, doing these circumferences, hook that in there like that. And I always like to try and come straight off the top of the beam or the bottom. I always call it off a corner. And your tape will go straight into the raculator like that and there's no kink on that tape. Whereas if you go down on the side and run it in like that, that puts a lot more kink on that tape. And uh, sometimes those kinks will last. You can straighten them out again, but it's just a lot better for your tape if you try to run it as straight in as possible. Another tip that I'd like to show you, if you ever have a rack where a point didn't grow or is broke off and it's on the other side, like for instance, on this one, this brow tine is broke off, and you the raculator is set up. It's in the programmed into the chip, so it always it, it doesn't know that this tine is missing. So you'll have to enter a zero there. If you if you don't and do the tine one on this one, it's going to compare it to the tine one over here, and it's going to mess up your net score. So what you have to do is when you get to left tine one, the way the raculator is now, is just hit the sub button. Don't enter anything at all, and go and just measure your tine two, and then it's comparing this tine two to this tine two, and everything is right, and, and then your net score will come out properly. Another thing we have on the raculator is a mode called extra. What we use that for is finding circumferences. As for instance, on this four-point side of this whitetail, you can also use it on antelope, goat, sheep to break out the circumferences on them. I'll show you how this works here. Uh, say for instance we have the first circumference done, second one done, third one done. The fourth circumference is taken on a four pointer like this, halfway between the middle of the last tine and the tip of the beam. 
So you go to you push your step button until you get to the extra mode. And then you can just go roll from the tip along the beam to the middle of the last time. It'll record that distance on the raculator. You can then just hit your divide by two button. That takes care of all that math for you. It tells you that it's five and seven eighths. You can then either clear or roll in the reverse direction. That works pretty good. Watching your screen till it gets to zero, which is right there. You can mark it, take your fourth circumference at that point. One other thing that you might run into, it might be rare, but uh, on a mounted head, if the ear is in the way, when you want to roll the beam, or sometime on some real non-typical, if there is some point that you can't get at to properly do with the wheel, any, any beam or point, anything that you ever want to measure, you can just use this part of the tape right here that's right close at the housing and hold that on your line or at the base and you can just pull out as much as you need, hold it along your tine and uh, lock your button or along your beam. And this part of the housing here will have to go right against the tip. You can just feed that back in and you can measure any tine or beam like that, hit your proper button, and you can record anything that way. Just for an example, I'll show you on this tine what I mean. This will hold right on the line, that back part of that clip. You can run it along like that. Put your raculator right on there like that. Lock your button. Push your tape back in. And now you've measured that tine. You can do that on any beam or tine that you ever want to. Also remember that on non-typical tines, to clear the measurement after the score button is pushed, you have to hold down the clear button for two seconds. Also remember that your raculator will automatically shut off after seven minutes of non-use. Also when needing the quarter measurements for sheep and pronghorns, first row the wheel or use the tape to find the longest horn, then press the divide by two button twice. This will show the quarter measurement. And if you're interested in one of our cases, please see your local dealer or look us up on the web.